What do you reckon the best way is to get started in Warhammer these days? If I could have just had three individual cool models to try and paint and then feel like I've completed something that quickly, I think that would have that would have spurred me on a lot more. I've got some friends who were like sort of interested in maybe the gaming side of things. And I feel like where I went wrong was I tried to make it a bit more about me. So I was like, oh, well, step one, if we're going to play the game, we've got to like build and paint all these models. I, I wish that I had acknowledged that my first model was definitely obviously going to be rubbish. But here's a question. If you started with a better brush and you didn't have that, oh, this brush is amazing, right? and you had that from the beginning, I'd probably say that your painting would progress quicker because you've got a tool that's more proficient at what it does. I think I would have wrecked my brushes. Actually, that's the number one thing I'm going to recommend to people getting into the hobby, is do not... What do you reckon the best way is to get started in Warhammer these days? We've all come into the hobby at different points in our lives, over the years, different time periods. It's changed quite a lot. It has. I, I still think the one of the best ways is having a friend or someone that you know that's into it or been into it that then gets you into it or that gives you a book or White Dwarf or shows you something. You go around their house to play computer games or whatever and you see some of their Warhammer that they haven't hidden away because they're embarrassed to show it or whatever. And then you you get into it through that. I think that's one of the best ways. It's like a very natural way of natural way of getting into it rather than your parents taking you into a games workshop or you... Uh, I don't know. Like, that's the way that I, I, I feel like um, it's definitely easier if that happens. Like if if you have a friend, yeah, I feel like it is something that you definitely benefit from being like guided through yeah, an introduction yeah. by someone who already knows. It's like when you sign up to like a MMO for the first time or something and your friend's already been playing for four years and has all the best armor and loads of money and like gives you loads of stuff for nothing. Like automatically it just makes everything like easier. And I think with Warhammer, it's so in depth that you, if you are literally just starting on your own, I mean, obviously you can talk to the guys in the, in the shop and everything and they yeah. can walk you through stuff. But if you are literally out there on your own trying to work it out with no like guide, it's so difficult. Catching strays here, Joe. It's so difficult. Is that what you did? That's literally what I did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, I'm not like having a go at you for it. No, right? it was a nightmare. Like, more, no, I completely more power agree. to you. But yeah. I'm just saying it's like harder, right? Like, it was it was really difficult. That um, is actually what I did as well, by the way. Mm. Like I was the friend that James is then talking about. I think like, I think someone getting you into it can that can explain it in a way to you that's a lot less uh, of an Everest to then to get a book and just try and read all of it. And things. I think someone explained the brief synopsis of these are the factions, this is the general idea of it, this is what you do on the game. Like playing your first game, that person, it's a real sort of, uh, the game is obviously a very community driven thing and like a, a group sort of thing. So it's having someone there that shows you how to play your first game and shows you what the dice rolls are and shows you how to do that side of the whole, or teaches you how to base coat your first model or, you know, or build your first model. I think having that helping hand is, it's also a very, good way so that then when you become more experienced you can then pass that on to someone else that comes along i think it's a nice kind of like give you give back by doing it that way i think i think that's quite a good way of i mean i'm i'm reluctant to like turn anyone away who is maybe starting out who doesn't have anyone no that no, they know is in that no i mean that's, yeah. that's well, exactly I was... what i did and it was difficult in the sense of there's like a because i didn't have much prior knowledge i didn't really do much um I know a lot of people might start out by watching a few law videos and they feel like they've got a bit of an idea what's going on. Maybe they do some research. I just stumbled into a games workshop store like on an afternoon because I was walking by. It's funny that you say that as if that's like an odd thing where, you know, you, you just stumbled upon the store. But when me and James got into it, that's all. That's the only, it's, that's it's the very, only way yeah. you found out what it was. Yeah. Like there wasn't law videos and there wasn't yeah, like... Yeah, YouTube wasn't, well, it wasn't around. Than, like, yeah, YouTube... You know. Yeah, YouTube didn't exist yet YouTube when I yeah. got into it. No. I think maybe YouTube was around the corner, but there definitely weren't more Hammer Law videos on it when it did launch. Uh, early, like, early 90s is when I got like like into it and there was nothing like that. It was White Dwarf or White Dwarf or Games Workshop. That was it, literally. Uh, you either went down the Games Workshop. I remember going down Games Workshops on Saturdays like with, with my friends and playing games and stuff. And then you'd all go down there on like various events and things that they held or like when the new White Dwarf came out or whatever. That's the, the way you wouldn't just... Jump yeah. on Instagram or jump on, you know, a Facebook group or whatever. Like that just wasn't around. Mine was I, I think I mentioned on a episode before, mine was 
accidentally dragging my parents into it because I thought they sold video games, <laughs> which I think is a lot of people. Probably, it's funny, like, yeah. You're like, and, I, and then when I got in there, I was like, oh, this looks really cool, actually. But that's why they're changing the store names to Warhammer because it's known as the Warhammer shop, not the Games Workshop. You know? Yeah, it's yeah. The, you know, um, I feel like in a way I like accidentally did it on hard mode. Like we're in this yeah, day and age. Exactly, it, was like, yeah. it was like I think twenty end of twenty eighteen when I first got into it. Yeah. yeah. I mean there was YouTube channels then, there was law videos, there was, there was painting tutorials. You, you, you got it. into it at the one of the yeah, it, it's getting easier and easier to get into. So you definitely were at I feel like even now point. when I see all the new starter sets and the new game boxes and the new systems, I feel like even now in the last few years it's gotten even easier than when I started out. I think that's going to happen though. Like the way you get into it now in five, 10 years' time, when films and movies and all uh, movies, films and, and series and all this stuff are out, I think it, I think so, you're going to have a lot of people that go, Well, I saw the, I saw the film, I saw the, I saw the series, or I saw what I think that. And then just stumbling across a shop and going in there will be, you, you'll have known, you'll know of it way before the shop, you, before even going to the shop, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's like it'll get to a point where like the brand, reputation kind of precedes itself like you it's like people know what it is before actually knowing what it is yeah they yeah, hear, yeah. hear of it before seeing the shop yeah. rather than the other way around I, I, like most people have seen a shop but i do not think even it's there already it. like like i think that that is pretty much there already like because if you like, i don't think i i genuinely don't think it is in the way that we think it is because no, but, i've i've tried to explain my job to multiple people um and like it's so difficult i have to work my way back so i have to be like right do you know what um warhammer is no okay do you know what dungeons and dragons is no okay oh, have you seen stranger things yeah well you know the thing they play in stranger right, things okay yeah it's kind of like that I, but like, i had that experience for the first time like since doing this it was my first like uh interaction with a stranger or someone asked me i think i was getting my hair cut yeah and asked me what i'd done and i, I did exactly what you did i started at my real job and then I had to like backtrack until eventually it went from, oh yeah, I do media and photography for a commission studio to, um, yeah, I sort of paint like figurines of Star Wars models and then take photos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, I assumed that most people had heard of it because like heard of it in terms of like, just knowing that, it, I feel like it's impossible to not like, have walked past the Warhammer shop. They're in most town centres up and yeah, down the UK. I, I so, so like, you've, it's whether you've acknowledged it or even taken any notice of what it is. I suppose. Like, I expected most people for a while. I expected most people to reply like, "Oh yeah, I think I've seen one of those shops, but I'm not really sure what it is." But the amount of people that literally just flat out know, like Ree before she worked here, never even heard. I feel of like it. there's not a lot. No of, I feel like there's not a lot of grey with it. You either say to people like, sometimes I go soft and I'll try to like explain around it, and they're like, "Oh, you mean Warhammer?" Yeah. Yeah, like well, they yeah. know, or they just completely have no idea. I was like, I was at the um, the gym that I joined. I was trying to explain to my PT what my job was, and I think he kind of got it. Like I was trying to explain it, and da, da, da. and then I uh, one of the other PTs there saw me post something on on Instagram about this podcast actually, and was asking me about it. And I was like, oh yeah, we like, and I started to do the spiel of the like trying to work it back. And I was like, yeah, we kind of paint like little scale model type things and he was like what like warhammer and i was like oh yeah yeah that's well easier so you could never guess like people do even know what it is or they don't i, th I think sometimes though you do have like people that when you mention it they go oh i think my, my grandson or my like my cousin does that it's like there is that yeah there, when you say there's no gray area, i do think there is a little bit of that because oh, no, there is some because, yeah. because you will you will have some people that are aware of it through some something but it won't be like a direct oh i know what warhammer is and yeah either that end of the spectrum or it is I don't know of it, but there is, yeah. I think, a little bit of, oh, I think I've seen that, or I've seen that shop or whatever the case may yeah. be. So, yeah. But what, what I was getting at was that what, your point to, like, when films happen and TV shows happen and stuff, it'll be, like, um, way more common for people to at least know what it is. Like, yeah, no, definitely the, the Marvel, like, phenomenon over the last, like, 10 years has kind of proved that. Not Again, most people knew what Marvel was, but nowhere near... As they didn't have anywhere near as much knowledge of it as they do now, even if no, it's no. like a casual passerby almost. Yeah. Um, same thing with Game of Thrones and stuff like that. Like once TV and film hits, it becomes a whole different animal, yeah. Animal, doesn't it? I yeah. think at that point it'll be even easier to get into it because there'll be all things tailored to specific films and specific TV shows or whatever. 
and we're, we're so far off that now. But the, yeah, to, back to the original point was that like it is just getting easier and easier to get into. So I think if we let's approach it from like the point of someone's watching this and they want to become that friend in the friend group. Yeah, they yeah. are. They don't have one. No one in the friend group is actually into it. They want to get into it. What are we suggesting? What do we do first? I've I've tried and failed to get my friends into the uh, into the Warhammer scene because obviously I I say obviously I'm way more into the painting hobbying side of things. I don't really care for much for the games. I've got some friends who were like sort of interested in maybe the gaming side of things, and I feel like where I went wrong was I tried to make it a bit more about me. So I was like, oh well, step one, if we're going to play the game, we've got to like build and paint all these models. So I like. That was step one. Was like, oh, we had to sit down and I was trying to show them how to paint and everything, which they obviously weren't into. Yeah, and I feel like that immediately like switched them so off like completely. But if you if you approach it by like just getting the models, clipping them out, even get some easy builds, and just play, give them an intro into the game. Like even even like one model against one model, or like three models against three models, or whatever. Like that small little bit will get them in switched on and be like, oh right, I understand what it's like now. You know, I think that that will help hugely or that would help hugely if you have that but so one of the things that i've my latest uh attempt at this with friends i'm kind of moving around all my friends and trying to force them to get in <laughs> um unfortunately one of them recently turned around to me and was like oh like sent me a load of pictures of models that he'd bought and i was like oh brilliant he's back into it however since i first tried to get him into it he's now moved to uh holland so right, okay yeah that's not very good no. Not very good for me. It's too late, if I'm honest. He should have done it. Should Ages have done it a few ago. years ago. Um, but the most recent one that I've kind of found success with introducing people to it. And again, it's like they've got to have some minor interest to line up with it. Um, is suggesting the uh the war cry starter boxes and stuff. Yeah, they're really good. Because yeah. I they will very soon find out what part of Warhammer they're interested in with that. Because in that, in an entire Warcry, um, not Warcry, Underworlds, Underworlds sorry, yeah, Underworlds, yeah. in an entire starter box, um, you'll only have a few models that you have to paint and you have a full game that you can play with those models. Yeah. You'll pretty soon learn which parts of the Warhammer hobby you like. Did you prefer playing the game? You don't obviously have to paint them to play the game. You can just build them. They're easy build. Play the game. See how you like that. And then there's only a few models there um, to paint. And you can actually feel like you've completed something fairly soon. Like even when I got into it, I got as an adult, I got back into it um, by getting the seventh edition starter box. And um, it was just overwhelming, to be honest. Like not having a clue what to do. And just having like it, 40 models or something, that's, whatever that's it is. Like. Basically what I did. I but bought the, um, so this was 2018, so I bought, that would have been before the reboot of AOS. I bought the Stormcast versus uh, Nighthaunt box, like the full big Spiel Army box. Yeah. And like I said, I had no one else who was into it. And I was like, oh, well, if I paint a whole box and like both sides, then like I can get someone else into it because all they have to do is just pick up the models that I've already painted and they can yeah. play a game, right? But that was so overwhelming to have two, not one, but two armies to paint, let alone yeah. just the one. It was so just like, even breaking it down, like having a 10-man squad as your first thing to do, mm. I didn't know what to do. Like I literally hadn't touched Warhammer since I was like 10 or 12 or something. Um, so it was like 10 years prior, maybe a little bit longer. And I, I just got so overwhelmed by it. So if I, I feel like with the... Underworlds boxes or the other skirmish games, like Underworlds on a team, you can have a team with three models. If I could have just had three individual cool models to try and paint and then feel like I'd completed something that quickly, I think that would have that would have spurred me on a lot more. Like, See, I tried to when I got my friends into it. I tried to go the root kill team because I was like, that's smaller. That would definitely work. But where yeah, I went it's the wrong, same kind of thing. Yeah, it yeah. was the same concept, but again, I fell flat on that because what I didn't foresee, I don't know if it's slightly different now if you just have kill teams in a box or what the score is, but for the armies that they wanted to play to field like a kill team of even like it was like eight models. Boxes, we had to buy like four different boxes. So like day one, it's like, right, we've got four different sets. And even though like, yeah, total, you only need to build like eight, 10 models, you still got to sort of go through building and the instructions of like yeah. four, five different so boxes. Kill team is actually a better option for that now because... 
the way that kill team works now is um it's the standard squads that you'd have in in 40k, 40K. so it, kill team was a mix and match like i'll have one intercessor one tactical marine one eliminator whatever now you have a team of uh infiltrators right and it's 10 infiltrators or whatever however many it is and that's the kill team so you can either buy the kill team box for that or you can buy the uh, your own box and just use the rules obviously yeah so kill team is a bit better for that now you'd only have to buy one box which is a little bit nicer i i, I still think buying one of the bigger boxes and splitting it with somebody is a good way of doing it because then that way you both have this thing together that you're sharing you both invested cost wise into it so it makes it better for, for entry point as well and then you can build the forces and do all the bits and bobs that are inside within that box and it's almost like you go through all of the stages so building your models you can go all oh, right okay well let's tonight let's build some of our models or next week let's build all our models and then you start painting it all together and then you go through that whole sequence of the hobby from build all the way through to gaming together using that one box and then you don't necessarily need to get one of the massive massive boxes but you could get one of the small sort of like I can't remember what they're called, but you get basically the the sub starter box. They that do has, like that. That's a new thing as well yeah. for the last two editions, where yeah. they've done like I think it's called like the elite edition, yeah, the elite or that, edition, whatever. Yeah. Where it's like a reduced amount of models, yep. simplified rules. That's again at, that almost treads the line of the the kill underworld team. thing I was yeah. saying or kill team. Yeah, it's like really small amount of models, and and that'd be quite helpful, I suppose. But like, I just think overall making sure that you're not overwhelming yourself is the best way to get into it because yeah. like it and having a friend who's already into it can be overwhelming like what george was just saying where he was forcing all his friends to paint when they didn't want it and stuff like that like you got to end up turning those people away so you got you got, you got to test the water view, like oh this is rubbish i'm not enjoying it sort of thing you you, you just you just got to test the water with that person and just see if they that like, are they into science fiction are they into fantasy do they like Star i think the Wars, the best know, way like, you can do it, the best thing you can do is if someone asks you about you know starting warhammer as i'm sure you will get asked all the time i get asked all the time is find out what their other interests are specifically within like pop culture and stuff because you can then use your knowledge of Warhammer to pinpoint something that might interest them. Because for them, to just say say to them, for example, like go on the Games Workshop website, have a look around, see what you like. There's so much stuff. Again, it's overwhelming. Like that's one of the things I like to do if people ask me about getting into it. And then again, it's like, well, what what side are you more interested in, like painting or gaming, or like what side do you want to do? Um, yeah. So I think that's that's if I was doing that i would keep it small um and then when it does actually come to painting if we talk a bit more specifically about painting because that's what the podcast is about i think i would say like no half and half schemes <laughs> yeah keep it simple <laughs> keep it simple um i actually wish i i used to think when i started i thought and again i'm talking about starting again as an adult not not as a child i thought that it would be easier to do like a not have to follow the law. Mm. And now I find it way easier to follow the law. Like I, I feel like it's actually a guide. It's it is. not it's it not is, a restriction. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's a guide on how like if you want to do something outside of the law, then obviously do it. But yeah. as a from a point of starting, I feel like I actually um wish I paid a bit more attention because I would have understood things as, I, as I went on and then yeah. once you understand the rules you can break them a little bit easier because you know where what things you can change yeah. and what you can still get away with and stuff like that but straight away I kind of like um like was like well I'm not even going to bother reading too much about the law like I know like the rough idea of idea it. and stuff like that whereas I think the law can actually be it's a it's, bit of a guide. It's, it's super helpful like you know I always say this it's a third of the hobby yeah. like um it's not like the, the models don't have some kind of backstory it's like as i mentioned like for the painting perspective it's like futuristic scale modeling like if you paint in perspective eh? yeah exactly if you if you if you painted like a world war ii late war tiger in the wrong colors people would be like well that's not late war it's very similar with 40k whereas obviously like chapters and things have specific heraldry and iconography and that's there to guide you to to produce something which is true to what you see like back in the day like in my days when i started 
White Dwarf or going down a local games workshop were the things that would point you in the direction of making choices for what you were doing. You'd, you'd speak to your friends in the shop or you'd speak to the store manager or you'd get the latest White Dwarf and it'd have like an index of starties about a specific chapter or something like that. Um, and that's kind of like where you would where you would get the sort of steering to, to do stuff. Nowadays, it's even easier, obviously, like things with Lexicanum, with like wikis and with like all the things that are online, all the YouTube, like all the things that are out there, like even like Lutin's videos with the law and narrative and stuff like that. You've like got this huge archive of information, which it really me- means and makes looking at the n- that narrative and law and perspective of it and, it and putting that onto your models so much easier than it's ever been before. Um, obviously, look, that's with a caveat. Of no one's going to ridicule you if you don't follow the law. You can do whatever the hell you like, but but it sh- you should see it as a guide or assistance to what you're painting. You know, it sh- you know. Otherwise, why are you, why are you painting space marines if you're if you're if you're trying to paint a model in a certain color scheme and you're not following the stuff that's in artwork or that's in? Well, they might just say they look cool. Yeah, that's yeah. What there, I was there, doing. There, like, there, there I, but I, again, I just thought, I think what I'm getting at is I saw at the time I saw the law as like oh, that's an extra thing to worry about. I don't want to worry be. about that. Yeah. But really, I could have used it to help me as I was starting because it would have it just tells you what to do. Like it tells you, I might have been like, oh, I don't know what color to do this thing. Like, And then when you're following the law, it kind of explains that, right? Um, so that I, I'd maybe not be so scared of that. But saying that certain people like will just get into it and have this creative mind that they can just run and have this exact thing that they want to. That's produce fine. right so they might not need it but for me i i, I probably could have done with I, I, doing that a little bit more i just think it's a layer of depth and interest that you can add to the models that's not a sculpted detail it's not something that um you know it's, it's an extra thing that adds adds not i don't want to use the word importance but adds like visual interest and a level of depth onto your models it's not like you're just painting something that hasn't got a story or background behind it, and all the little bits of iconography and details and things like that. They are they are the narrative of that model and the background of it. And it, if but it, then we are talking about people starting out. Like, yeah, I know. So but, what but, but, the next thing I was going to get onto was that I, I wish that I had acknowledged that my first model was definitely obviously going to be rubbish. Yeah, like yeah. I feel like I didn't let go of my first model because it <laughs> looked rubbish like i didn't just let myself finish it and go there's my first one it's obviously not good i'll move on to the next one now i like kept trying to do stuff to my first model and that's the next thing i would say is that like just igno- just get the, get the, the first, first model, model out of the way get it done it's going to be rubbish it's literally going to be rubbish like unless you are Arch, already trained already yeah. have an artistic mind or, or whatever you're not going to be happy with it. It might not be rubbish. You're not going to be happy with it. It's what I'm getting at. So, yeah. and for me, I definitely wasn't. I, I was like, how can it look this bad? Like, it looks so easy. I was following like Duncan's videos, I think, or something like that. Um, like the, the Warhammer ones. And uh, yeah, so I, I wish I let go of that. I wish I acknowledged that that's okay. That my first one isn't going to look exactly it's, how I want it to. It, it's that Simpsons barbecue scene over and over and over. And yeah, over again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Holding yeah, the box yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what spurred me on to keep going with the painting. Was the frustration of like I'd watch this video. I think it was like Apathetic Fish or something. Yeah, like painting Space Marine. I'm like, I could do that. Obviously, I can do that. <laughs> I'm good at things. No. Yeah. No. no. Painted it. And I was like, oh, don't work like that. Don't it? work like that at all. Yeah. yeah. I remember when I first started, because I obviously was into Airfix, and my granddad got me into Airfix. I remember painting Warhammer. I had the original Space Crusade models as some of the first models I, I had. Um, and I remember painting them with Humbrol, Humbrol paints from from Airfix. And I was like, why do I, all my models look super shiny? Like, <laughs> I was just like, you know, so yeah, um, I, I, you know, I quickly learned acrylics on the way forward. Um, but, but yeah, I think, I think the thing, the other thing as well, with like starting out now compared to maybe when when I first started, or maybe when you first started, Joe, and maybe even also you know and George as well. The difference in that short space of time as well is also that the, the level of entry of what you see people doing. Like I've seen it where people have posted, "Oh, this is my first model," and you look at it and you're like, "I wish when I started that was half what my first model." Looked yeah, like. but you you've just you hit know. the nail on the head as well posted your first model i've I've mentioned this on the on yeah, yeah. episode previously like that wasn't a thing when no. either of us got into it post like post where like what yeah. like that wouldn't have been a thing like well, i suppose it, you could you could always i suppose you could compare that to going down the shop on a saturday 
and Good take yeah, taking, and your, taking your first models into like it's because it, back in the day obviously the store manager like even now so like i'd say that generally speaking um when it was just white dwarf and stores the store manager would have been in the hobby for a, a, a considerable period of time before working for the company and they would have an aptitude of painting ability that you go in there and go oh my god the store manager's a great painter do you know what i mean so you'd you'd have a similar sort of thing where you yeah. take your first models into the shop and get the store manager to go Oh, oh, he's done that. Or I see you've done that. Or, you know, that, that's, yeah. that's very similar. But also that. in both cases, I would say there's a hefty amount of uh, lies being told there. I feel Potentially. Like, <laughs> yeah, I my brother like, painted it for yeah, me. Yeah, or like <laughs> either someone else painted it or it's not your first. If you see it and it's like that good. I do think uh, there are people out there, not everyone, but there mm. are definitely people out there um, paint, posting my first model that, that isn't their first model. Well, we spoke before all. on the show about compare himself to others it's not yeah no i know i know yeah yeah yeah, i know yeah but that that's yeah so yeah i guess don't look too much into that is what i'm getting at like you just because someone posted their first model and it looks incredible don't get yeah don't get down on yourself about it because it might not even be their first model is there anything that like you wish you knew when you was first getting into this in terms of uh things to buy things to avoid things you wish you knew decent brushes to start off with do you reckon from day one? Because the advice is always like get the synthetics first, right? Because you're going to bin them. Yeah, but I, I think that nowadays the resources that are out there to learn how to look after a brush and use a brush and what you should be doing with it are way better than they used to be. Um, so I think being able to get a decent set of brushes to start off with, and I'm not going out and saying go and buy a 60, 70 quid set of five or six brushes or whatever. I'm saying like maybe get one or two good brushes, just a couple, just so in that way you've got something nice to use. Um because it will make the painting experience a lot better. Like I find synthetics, they, they, they do what they do. They, they hook at the end or they don't perform as well as a Kalinsky or whatever. I think that you, you, you want your first experiences. That's the first experiences as a painter are the things where you're going to be learning the most. Um, and I think not having the best tool possible to do that with it's like starting a race with your shoes tied. I think that if you have a good brush to start off with, I think it will serve you better. And your experience of painting and learning and manipulating and playing with paint will, will be better as a result of it, personally. I think I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count that. Okay. Because I kind of disagree. And I think what I, if we're talking about someone getting into it, I think as like a main priority, what I would say equipment-wise and stuff like that, I'll caveat this by saying, when I finally switched to good brushes, it was a game changer. Yeah. When I finally switched to having a good painting lamp, it was a game changer. Mm-hmm. Like when I eventually bought an airbrush, that was a game changer. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I would have benefited from having all of those things right away. I think you need to like grow into it. Exactly. So what I'm with. getting at is I think what I would suggest to a newbie, a straight up newbie, is spend your money and your time figuring out exactly what like models are going to interest you the most. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. And get spend the money on on the models and everything else you can I would say you can skimp out on when you're starting. Um especially cuz a new if you're so new to it you're not going to be taking care of your brushes, you're not going to be doing stuff like that. There's but, basic care and then there's knowing the ins and outs of it. But like but I think if you, if you, there are videos out that you can watch that would, that, that are already available. Are, yeah, but then and I'm you talking, will stumble across them. Like but then will. I'm talking again about like overwhelming a new person with information. Like for me, you don't want to be scared of it either. If you're like no, just starting so. out and you know you spent fifteen quid on a brush, yeah, you don't want to be like all oh, like worried using it. Exactly. I think what I would do is focus on cool models, and I would pick like one, and I would just go one at a time. Um, once you feel like, well, you'll know once you need to upgrade your equipment, I think so, so you'll, you'll start, if you start to feel like your equipment isn't serving what you need to, then you've probably progressed past that equipment. Yeah, but so, so here's a question. If you started with a better brush and you didn't have that, oh, this brush is amazing moment. Then you had that from the beginning. I'd probably say that your painting would progress quicker because you've got a tool that's more proficient at what it does. But I think I think the the counter to that is that like I think I would have wrecked my brushes. I don't think I would. Have, I, I, don't, I don't think I, I, don't, I don't think I would have I known. I don't think I would have known. I don't. Well, I wouldn't know the difference. I wouldn't know that it was an amazing brush because I wouldn't have used an awful brush. Equally, if you're incorrectly loading the brush and using it 
as I'm saying correctly, but obviously you're starting out, you haven't got the finesse, you haven't got the technique. I would argue that the quality of the brush is largely irrelevant. Exactly. If, if, you've you've got, got, if, if you've you don't got, know how to use it anyway. If you've got a Kalinsky Sable brush that costs 15 quid and you're putting it straight into a pot, I'd argue that that's going to be just as bad as synthetic. Yeah, synthetic I think by saying, by saying like better equipment and stuff, you're assuming some prior knowledge. And I think I'm but, talking about someone I who... Know, like, I think because there's more availability to get... The, uh, there's more availability out there to get information about what the do's and don'ts. I think that you would, if you spent the money on a brush like that, you'd probably take more care of it because you know that you, you'd have some predetermined, I understand I've got to look after this. I don't know. I, I just, I just think, I, I mean, I back, get that. Back in the day, like, the, the, back in the day, like, you, you learned that through exactly what you're saying. Oh, I put the brush into the, I put this really good brand new starter brush or whatever into a paint pot and then I break the brush. I think you learned that that way. But nowadays, the way that people get into it is they, they have white, way more experienced people helping them get into it. Or if they do go down a shop, then they're, they're, then that's that's said to them, if that makes sense. And I, and I think that, I don't know, I just think that the starting point is very different now to how it how it is. And because of that, I think you, you could justify starting with something better. I don't know. So that's just the way I, just I wouldn't, I wouldn't have it as a priority, personally. I, I would, if you're going to put your money anywhere, I'd put it into a model that you absolutely Oh, don't get love. me wrong. Cool, cool, buying cool models is... Yeah. Is, that's is, the, I, that's think, I think the, if you're on a budget, if, if budget is a concern, then first, I would... Yeah. Definitely lean towards the cheaper brushes, tackle it later. Maybe a nice brush is like a day three of painting. Yeah. <laughs> so I just think like there's models and then paint would be my next one to like yeah. actually spend money on. Yeah, I agree. Everything else, I think at the start, you can kind of skim power. I've, I've got a hot take here. I think good paint is better than a good brush. I think that you largely end up having the same issue where it's like if you don't know what to do yeah it, I think you'll just be. be getting you know but like, yeah I would agree I would say definitely I would rather someone I'd rather recommend someone that they go and buy XYZ like better more premium paint because you'll have a better time learning that way Um, I look, I definitely got like I would definitely bought some cheap paints back when I was starting and then like completely got frustrated why they weren't working properly or why they the coverage was rubbish or, yeah, yeah. or whatever. So, um, yeah, I think I would probably agree. Maybe, maybe some better paints, get your Vallejos, get your Citadels and stuff, yeah, spend yeah. the money on them. Um, ahead of good brushes when you start off, I would say. You're two to one down on brushes. <laughs> I know, but I, I just, I personally, I would, I wish I had better brushes when I started. I think. Um, I'm glad I didn't because I didn't know what to do with them and yeah. I just wrecked all my brushes. Different times though, right? Like surely a cheap brush now compared to a cheap brush when you started is a completely different. Yeah, but the thing That's is, true. The thing, that cheap, is, that is a true. cheap brush now, you can get way better cheap brushes probably well, than, yeah, of than you the can. cheap brushes when you were yeah, starting. No, yeah, no, definitely. Like the, 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 the starting, like even entry brushes that are decent, the cost, the cost price now is way, way less, mm. you know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I just think it's because it's because it is literally the thing that puts paint onto the models. It's not, you know, you're not sitting there finger painting the model, you know what I mean? So, like, unless you know, you're Roman Laplace, then yeah, maybe well, there might, you go. But, work some magic. But, but, but I just think that it's such a it's the connection point between you and that model. And I just think that having something better to start off with will that you value more means that you're inherently going to take more care of it. I think I don't know. That's just the way that I think about it. But yeah, cool models. Lots and lots of paint, preferably retro. Um, and um, no, definitely. <laughs> Again, for, for, for a new person, I would 100% not recommend. I'm an experienced old painter paint. and I hate using retro paint. Yeah, well, 100% don't. Like, don't, but as an, that's the, actually, that's the number one thing I'm going to recommend to people getting into the hobby is do not let people who have been into it for <laughs> ages try and tell you things are better than this and X, Y, and Z and better that, then than that they were now. Thing. Purely based on nostalgia, because that is all it is, is nostalgia. Don't let people tell you that what's available now isn't good, because there, it is. There's, there's a lot of products that are out now that I wish were around back in the day, like a lot of products. Um, yeah, like I think you're sport for choice nowadays on things that, that, are, that are really good for entry, getting into it. And I wish there was as much accessibility to those things and knowledge of those things that there is now when I started. Um, so yeah, but yeah, good paint, really cool models whatever brushes you feel appropriate and and yeah dive dive straight in i think I, I actually have a potentially hot take to end on actually um one thing i would say to someone who's just starting painting and something i wish i was a little bit as well is to just be a bit more wary of like 
everything you see on YouTube. I know this is on YouTube, <laughs> but just don't take everything. People can sound convincing sometimes, I think, when they don't. Some I've seen YouTube videos before. I go, well, I know that's wrong. I know that's I know what you're saying there's wrong. And it's like, they sound convincing. And I might be thinking that I'm doing something wrong or whatever. I think just be a bit wary of like following everything you see. I think if we, I've got one thing that I'll add in was a hot take, or not a hot take, but just something I'll add in is just don't be afraid to experiment and try different things. I think that your first year, I've said this before and I've spoken about other things, but your first year of painting is one of the most important so that you get, you establish yourself and what you like, what you don't like. And the only way of doing that is through trial and error. And I think that experimenting at an early age uh, within the hobby is really crucial and really important. Just a quick one. We wanted to remind you that you can get your own miniatures painted by the world-class team here at Siege Studios. We offer a variety of painting levels and services to accommodate for a variety of needs and budgets. Whether you want a centerpiece character for your army or a full-blown gaming force, we have what you need and we offer well above the industry standard in terms of painting quality and our service. You can learn more about our services and get a quote now at siegestudios.co.uk. And in the month of September, new clients can get 5% off of any commission using code SEPTEMBER5. Game show time. Oh, fun. Okay. What have we got? So, apparently, I mean, I'm not into sports, but I'm told there's this uh, popular game in the football sphere uh, called Start Bench Sell. How have you spun this one? Come on, then. I present to you oh, for this God. week's game, Command Reserve Purge. Oh, my God. <laughs> so this is going to be three Warhammer painting products or techniques or potentially models or characters or lore. Right. And this is effectively a sort of ranking system. Yeah. So you're going to have command. He's your commander. You pick it. That's your front runner. Yeah. Right. You've got someone on reserve. Maybe on occasion we're going to use them. And okay. then you've got your purge. This okay. needs to go. Okay. It's not happening. Right. right. Come on then. Are you ready? Round one. The airbrush. Mm -hmm. Dry brush. Contrast paints. Right. Uh, this one's pretty easy for me, actually, off the top of the head. On a command, is it the good one? Command, the airbrush. I'm going to reserve contrast paints, and I'm going to purge dry brush. I just think, I just hardly ever use a dry brush technique, if I'm honest. I get that it's a big thing that everyone uses, and and... You know, it's a very useful thing to master, probably. I just don't find myself doing it, to be honest. I don't paint scenery, so that's probably why. <laughs> Come on, the airbrush, 100%. Uh, I'm going to reserve the dry brush, and I'm going to purge the contrast paints. Purge the contrast. Because I think, I think there's loads of different paints out there you can use. Nothing wrong with contrast at all whatsoever. I'm not saying it from that perspective. The reason I'm saying it is because basing on miniatures, you still do dry brush. So I that's the point. I think that that is uh, something that I uh, want to keep. I prefer to overbrush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, overbrush wasn't on the list, but yeah. You also, you can actually airbrush uh, similar, similar te No, you can actually airbrush the similar technique if you get your angles right. Yeah, you can. I, I'm I, off I, it. So you've got like your sand I, on your base and you're there like... No, I... You can I, do. You can I'm, airbrush oh, it. Oh, my God. I would... I, 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 I haven't. Yeah, but you yeah. can. <laughs> <laughs> no, command the airbrush, reserve the dry brush and purge the contrast paint. Not for the paint, just because it's there's plenty of paint out there. All right, round two. Glazing, wet blending, layering. Easy one. Um... I knew within seconds. Okay, well, you go. You can go first. Command glazing, reserve layering, purge wet blending. I think yeah, we're the same. The same. Yeah, we're the same. Yeah. Don't like a bit wet blending. No. I just haven't ever learned to paint that way. To be honest, I haven't actually. I've always just for a similar effect. I've always just been taught to to glaze and get the similar kind of layer blend. I'd yeah. say my wet blending prowess sort of stop starts and ends at uh, cloaks on models. I'd say flat, big flat yeah. surface. I, I, I just, I just think getting two wet bodies of paint and 
moving frantically with a brush between them to try and get them, like, try and oh, I'm sat there like stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> trying to trying to get them to merge together. I think that personally I prefer a bit more of a reserved, refined, controlled approach by glazing and by using much much thinner layers. Um a lot of frustration can happen with, with wet blending because it's not going how you want it to. And that's because you're not incrementally working the different colours individually rather than just getting two and going, oh, I'm going to get them to blend. Do you know what I think it is? I think it's yeah. just a drying time thing because obviously the technique comes from like oil paints and things that have a bit more working mm. time. If you've, like, if you've thinned down your paint a lot, which we're obviously taught to do and we all yeah. know to do, it's not going to behave quite how you want. No. Mm. Whereas if you have the thicker paint or you just thin it just a little bit less. Yeah. Mileage may vary. It's, uh, yeah. Round three. Super glue, plastic glue, push fit. Oh, this one's easy, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Yeah, I this one's easy, surely. Yeah, I think, I, I think. We're commanding super glue. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, you're commanding super glue. Might have blonde is in that family, so yes. Mm. He's done it again with the loopholes. Yeah, he's got the loopholes. No, holes. super glue. Super glue. Might have bonded to super glue. I'm not calling my. No, you're not having your little gal. <laughs> no. Super glue. You know what super glue S is. Super glue. Yeah. Command super glue. Reserve uh, plastic glue. Plastic glue. Purge. Purge. Push, push fit. fit. Yeah. Uh, genuinely, push fit. There's nothing wrong with it. In theory, but I've encountered a lot of issues. Even if you want to use glue with it, like it, ne you'd never actually. I think. I think. Find, I find they never actually get put together. I get they're designed so that people can just quickly get their things together if they're maybe not even going to paint the model. Yeah, yeah. For example, yeah. Um, I do think that maybe that could be communicated a little bit better then, because I, I, I think my first thought was, oh, they must go together really well, and. Personally, my experience of actually trying to push fit models, there's gaps and things, and it doesn't yeah. quite get in there. It's quite fiddly to put together. If you're not going to bother painting them or you're just going to spray on one color or whatever, then it's perfect. But for painting, I would I always have to clip the, the push fit bits off and then yeah. glue it together anyway. Yeah, I agree. That's what we do with the I just line. want to say for record on air, this goes against everything that he ever preaches <laughs> where we're off air. Always dunking on super glue. He's always coming after me for the super glue. I'm only going with it. He, me, only, he stitches I'm, me up. He stitches I'm, me up I'm, on only, the podcast. I am only going with it because Mighty Bond is not on the list. Yeah, he he's going. He's only doing it because he's putting Mighty Bond in with super glue. Yeah, which I guess it technically it is a super glue. Right, yes, but it is a super glue. But it's, it's a bit more specific. Yeah, yeah. Round five holds bricks together. Apparently. You've got to, you, <laughs> you've got to, you've got to get these 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 guidelines to these game shows a bit more a bit more stringent. Yeah, I think not quite airtight these are. No, they? final round. Gulliman, G Man himself, the Lion, Abaddon. Hold that thought for painting. Oh right. Okay. Oh. <laughs> It's hard. It's really hard because they're all they're all really good models. Um, this is really hard. I do genuinely. I was just taking a second there to think to myself, like I need to remove the bias. Yeah, you're not going to do that though. But I think even removing the bias, the lion's the best model out of all three of those. It's really hard, actually. It's a really, that's a really hard one. It is the newest, so there's that. It has that benefit. I think as these kinds of models, these big like Primark type models, the newer we get. I think those models are going to improve in general anyway. And that's not to say they're bad models, but I think that you're quite right, just the way they go together and the things that come with them, the options. Yeah, the technology the models, yeah. and the, and the, yeah. the sculpting oh, and, the, and the direction of really their, what they're doing with their models improves anyway. So the Lion being the newest one, it just so happens he's also the best character out of all of them. Um, so I'm going to command the Lion. I'll reserve... Oh, they're on the table. I didn't even know. Yeah, this. I, I, I realised <laughs> I'd chosen to put them there and I didn't even realise we had this question. We've so, got yeah. a lion kicking about as well, so yeah. we could have done that. Um, yeah, that's, maybe you should have purged him, then it would fit I'll, better. I'll reserve uh, a bad one and I'll, I'll purge. Go He's purging G-Man. Yeah. See, I, I don't think I can do the same because I think G-Man is like, for when he first came out being the first Primark model in plastic, I think it's too iconic to, to do that. And I think as a painting painting piece, it, it has loads of interesting details on it, like the flames, the sword, the arm. I think there's a lot to Not it. Not got a cape though, has he? Hasn't got a cape, which I which I, I do prefer personally. Um, so I, I just think Abaddon is the 
such a cool model. Yeah, I'm gonna I agree. And this is not through. I, I'm just gonna say this, this is not through through not liking Dark Angels. So I do. I share a book with them, obviously from Second Age. So I can't I can't say it in that. I context. share a book with like as if he's he is blood. <laughs> no, 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 as in the army, I collect shares a book with him. Um, also, uh, like it was your choice, and you weren't yeah, just yeah, stuck yeah. with that. No, I, I shared a book choice. with them. Yeah, how nice um, of me. I had the choice between my own Blood Angels codex, but I thought, you know what? No, I, I shared a book with them. Do you know? I'm, let's let's go with Command Gulliman, Reserve... Commanding Gulliman? Yeah, 100%. It's a great model. Commanding Gulliman, Reserve in Abaddon, and Purging the Lord. That is... I did not see that coming. That yeah. is unbelievable. Yeah, it is. Do you know what? Because I, I think that it's purely because they are really suited to each other's models as well. And for painting purposes, they do have inherently lots of different things, which I think is quite nice. The trophy rack, the other bits and details like Drac Nyen. Um, I, th- I think, yeah. I've never known thing. someone to reject modernity more in my life. Yeah, it's, it's not about, He's literally it's done not, it on release date it, order. It's not. That's literally not, the way he's done it. It's got nothing to do with when they're released. I just think that, Nothing to do with when they're released, other than the fact of it's to do with when they're released. You just <laughs> yeah. went on about how I can't do that to because it's the first it came out. I, yeah, Gulliman I can't do that to because of, because it's the first plastic Primark. I think it's a brilliant model to paint. I think there's loads of things on it that's good. Abaddon as well, I, I think the model is also inherently really interesting. I think you, what you already have, apart from the cape and other bits and details, what you have on the line already is there on G-Man. And I think that G-Man's a bit more iconic, personally. So I just prefer that. So yeah, Command Gulliman, Reserve Abaddon, and Purge the Lion. A load of rubbish. Also, <laughs> actually, no, we, we technically agree on one, I suppose. Abaddon, Abaddon yeah. we, we yeah. actually agree yeah. on. Middle yeah. of the road Abaddon. Yeah. Yeah. He's great. Yeah. He's great. He's Very cool model. Yeah. yeah, amazing model. All right. Question of the week time. Thank you, everyone, for leaving your questions in response on the previous episode. We've got another one for you this week. What was the model that was most difficult for you to paint? Uh, I've got one that was, I just found so difficult that I didn't actually finish. <laughs> this that counts. Um, when so I'd I, say that's a perfect answer. When I started, um, it's a bit weird actually, but when I started, the first army that I started painting, other than when I initially started painting, I started painting Dark Angels, but I never actually collected a Dark Angels army to play the game with. Um, first army that I started actually wanting to play with was Death Guard. Didn't you say you bought the the box? Yeah, yeah, but I never actually, pl- I didn't actually play. So you bought Dark Vengeance and you went, oh, I'm not even going to bother with Dark Angels. No, no, I bought Dark Vengeance. It had Chaos in it and it had Dark Angels. But then I just did that. That was also about three months before the Death Guard oh, right, Marines okay. new edition one came gotcha. out. Um, was that Dark Imperium? Yeah. 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 Um, no, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah Dark Imperium right. is the... It's eighth. It's eighth, yeah. Yeah, the eighth edition one. What was the ninth edition one called? Um, Indominus. Indominus. Yeah, yeah Indominus. Yeah, yeah. So, so it was the, the eighth edition one. So I'd bought the seventh edition one, but it was like months before the eighth gotcha. edition one came out. And just in our friend group, two of them had Space Marines. So when it came to actually gaming in 8th edition, I was like, oh, okay, I'll do Chaos. And I'll, right, I'm with uh, you. So anyway, so I was painting. That was the first one where I was actually regularly painting models to try and have an army to um, to play with. But I'd only ever really done, like, infantry. I had, I had a couple of tanks, but I didn't have, like, big monsters and stuff like that. And then uh, Mortarion came out. And obviously I was like, well, I have to have Mortarion. And trying to get into the right mindset to paint it and tackling a model that big was new to me. And I'd messed up the build a little bit as well um, in my like not wanting to do uh, sub-assemblies. I'd kind of messed up the build a little bit. Um, you didn't know my hobby I'd has used, been. I'd used uh, plastic glue and it had like messed up a couple of the surfaces and stuff. I just didn't have a good time with that model at all. And it's one that I've always thought to myself like, I, sh- I, w- I actually want to revisit it and I want to start it and do it in full just to like prove a point to myself that I could do it kind of thing. Um, yeah, I got proper sort of in my own head about it and just everything was going wrong. And I just, I didn't have an airbrush at that point. Um, I didn't, you know, I wasn't that experienced of a painter either. So it was a really big learning curve tackling a model that big. Um, and I kind of ended up like, it was base coated and it had wash all over it and I could like just with it but I didn't actually paint it properly um, so yeah Mortarion would, would be mine I think okay Bugs is mine 
I have struggled so many times. To, I love Tyranids as a, as a faction, as an army. Um, but I have probably started trying to paint an army probably about 10 times. And every time I would start with your HQ, so I pick like a hive, a hive tyrant or a swarm lord or something like that. And I just struggle getting a scheme that I like and also that you can then repeat countless tens and tens and tens and tens of times across all the other bugs in the in the army um and i don't know what it is i just i think i've been i'm so used to either painting like regular infantry like guard or or obviously marines and armored models and things like that that painting something way more organic and biological i i, I just kind of like struggle to really come up with a scheme or something that i actually enjoy doing that much um across a massive massive force um obviously the building the models i think the thing you were saying about making mistakes and stuff maybe with, with glue and stuff like that i think because they're a bit more organic you can afford a, maybe a tiny little bit of overspill here and there or whatever blah blah because yeah. because it kind of blends itself into the more organic shapes and arguably you, you definitely could on Montari because you could just say oh yeah it's corrupted isn't it that's yeah. true that is very true also. that bit of texture that cor corruption <laughs> yeah you can yeah definitely ever heard of pestilence ever <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you definitely, definitely um, add that on. But I think, yeah, I think I just, I really struggled with uh, sort of formulating like a skin. I'd see some like, I'd see some reference images. I'd see like, you know, you go on Google Images to do a search or whatever. I'd see and they go on there and try and find something. And then, and then, yeah, like you just, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't find, I would, I'd get halfway through a paint and I'd be like, oh, do you know what? I'm just not feeling this now. Or I'd see something, another scheme that I really liked and then just not be able to do that at all whatsoever. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, it's just always been nids for me. It's been like my, my sort of, Fated, not not able to complete model. I think kryptonite. Kryptonite, yeah, basically. Chaos obliterators. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, I've seen some that you fated because they've come through this. You fated some for us, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I've done the Empress Children ones. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's just a lot going on with them, isn't there? <laughs> yeah. Spe no, do you know what it was? It's around the back. They've got all that skin. Yeah. yeah. And then like the big like bits of machinery and mech stuff coming through. And then there's power armor and there's like under it's just it's it's a myriad of texture and because of the scheme i was painting it in there was just a lot of blending and glazing and stuff it was not like a it's not like an obvious choice i'd say because it's not like a particularly like large model or anything like too crazy in terms of build but it's just, i don't know what i just struggle with that I yeah really struggle with that i don't know if it's specific to maybe i should like you said with your material maybe i should reapproach it now maybe i'd find it a bit easier but I'm sure would. I can make that happen for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think you would. Um, yeah. I think especially something like that where it's like fairly, not run of the mill, but they're not. it's not like, like you say, it's a fairly normal model, isn't it? It's a bit under the radar, that one, I think. Yeah, yeah. so I think now, definitely with your experience that you've had, I think you'd probably breeze for them now. Yeah. yeah. Oh, we, don't, don't we can make the, that happen. <laughs> don't set the bar there, Joe. I've got a lot, a lot to live up to with comments like that. We wanted to let you know that we now have new ranges of fantastic products over on the Siege Studio shop. Whether you're wanting to purchase a PDF tutorial for a character you're painting, you need a new airbrush, painting accessories, or want to book a class, you'll find what you need. We also have a bunch of merchandise, which is a great way to support the podcast. To see what we stock, head over to siegestudios.co.uk forward slash shop. Our new closing tradition for the show, Hobby Hacks. This is where we share our uh, quick little mini micro tips little hacks for the hobby that you can uh, hopefully take away and incorporate uh do you want me to start with this week let's do it yeah go for it this feels like a fairly mundane pick right but this i don't know this blew my mind so hopefully there's someone else <laughs> out there who will agree you know i kind of hope even though i'd love it to be so useful for loads of people i kind of hope that there's something now that's blown your mind and everyone that listens to it goes what a load of problems <laughs> <laughs> this guy didn't even know yeah you know when you see right like especially on box art basin they've always got those like really nice like little rocks like little bits of slate things like that like mm. basin mixes is something that i've always experimented with a lot like different size grains of sand and different substrates and things like that texture paste what have you i've always had my like go-to basin mix with like little rocks and stuff in there but never i was really quite like the look of like the tiny little bits of slate mm -hmm. and for ages i was like buying like different packs on like ebay of like little bits of slate and stuff and it was never the right size until it occurred to me you can just get like regular garden slate that you use for yeah. landscaping <laughs> and you can just put it in like a Ziploc bag and get a hammer and just, just hammer beat the it. hell out of it until just you get the size you want. Uh, but it, now with that, like, you know, there's like one 
one like shard of like garden slate that's enough to do like 50 bases <laughs> yeah. it's 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 almost like the moment when humanity discovered fire <laughs> like <laughs> <laughs> um yeah look i i've done that before yeah i have honestly just reverted back to like getting some pre-mixed basin material from uh from ebay and stuff that has a little a few little rocks and stuff in it the the slate thing i have done and I had mixed results, if I'm honest. I was either like, I don't know if I just don't get it, like exactly. You don't what you're understand to do. hitting things with a hammer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I just don't get it, but like, I either couldn't. I would go like too soft that it wasn't breaking properly, or I was like pounding it into dust. Like it was like I couldn't. <laughs> no, get, no, no middle there. Just I couldn't. I'm just get, just no, I, I you know your desk. Just keep getting. <laughs> Not in the garden. I was in the garden. I didn't. I wasn't in my hobby desk. I was in the garden. I thought I don't know what this is going to be like. I don't know if it's just going to fly everywhere or what. Like, and I was like <laughs> hammering away, and I just ended up with like dust, four decent bits, and then like just like yeah, just like little ground into like dust. I mean, I'm not going to lie. Like when you when you go for it, like there's some you've got to do some picking through, right? Yeah, a little yeah. Bit. It's not yeah. like I do this, and everything's just this like perfectly pristine, like even symmetrical little one millimeter piece. Yeah, no, I get that. But then what I'm saying is like. For the work put in, if some geezers already doing it on eBay <laughs> for me, I'll just buy that. Well, there you go. That's our hobby hack for this week. Thank There's you. two kind of, two two hobby hacks, really. Two hobby hacks for this yeah. week. Either yeah. do it or don't do it. Yeah. Two hobby hacks. <laughs> well, we hope you took something from that. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to this week's episode of Paint Perspective. We will catch you next week. Please feel free to leave your comments below for question of the week, and we will catch you next time. Bye.